Yam Madar is out of Summer League. Ooh, what does that mean? And the big debate that's raging on Kevin Durant and Jalen Brown. Would you trade JB for KD? I don't know about that. I'm going to explain why with Tom Westerholm right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your daily routine. I am here for you Monday through Friday with a free podcast. It's available everywhere podcasts exist. This show is also available on YouTube. Please watch the show on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. You get to see me, John Corrales' much younger brother. Obviously, John Corrales is the dude with the big beard. I don't have a beard, so I'm obviously not John Corrales. Um, I want to thank everybody for who donated to the uh, Dana Farber Cancer Institute and uh, the Heather Walker uh, fundraiser for, to for glioblastoma. It was a really nice, really nice of everybody to donate. Um, I'm John Corrales. I covered the Boston Celtics for Boston Sports Journal, and I was one of the media voters for the Celtics 75th anniversary team. We'll talk a little summer league. We'll talk a little bit of the big debate going on. Would you trade Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant and all of that? We're gonna do it with my friend. Tom Westerholm. Tom Westerholm, how are you doing today, my friend? I am doing well. It is good to be back. How are yeah. you doing? I'm great, man. I'm Excellent. always great, man. We're talking <laughs> basketball. We're having a good old time. Like, what, what can I possibly be? Not what can what can make me not great? Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, other than not being able to speak, which is you know a problem. A challenge for a podcaster. You know, it's. A, let's talk summer league huh all right <laughs> oh boy you know it's funny you know you, you take a couple of days off you get into such a groove yeah. working and you're like oh great i get to take a couple of days off like literally just two days off and all of a sudden it's just like wow i can't get started again i, I can't get the brain to get going again Oh, well, man. especially after you've been going for every day for for for, for months with like you know this playoff run and everything. I mean, I was I was I was telling my wife before I got on that I was like, I don't, I don't know if I've got this. Do I still have takes? Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. It really is funny because yeah, and you know what this does, honestly. Like the finals run throws off the cadence of yeah. the off season yeah. because I want to be writing my. You know, evaluations, my postseason yeah. stuff. I'm like, okay, so I did a Jason Tatum thing. I'm like, all right, let me do Jalen Brown. And nope, there's here's Brad Stevens talking because <laughs> this was the draft. Oh, yeah. okay, wait, I got to do a draft thing. So okay, let me. I'll, I'll do the Jalen Brown thing tomorrow because today is the draft. Oh wait, nope, nope. Eme is talking. We got to talk to Eme. Oh, here's a story that came out of Eme. I, I can do the Jalen Brown thing tomorrow. And then it's just like, here's the summer league roster. Here's yeah. Everything. All of a sudden, it's just. And obviously, I'm not saying this as a complaint. It's just that it's a new experience to be. You just all of a sudden you turn around. And you're like, wait a second. There's no buffer. We're not. Yeah. There's no like month to say. Okay, let me just get my review of the season. Let's get a real good hard look before we start moving forward. Now it's like, nope. You're moving forward. Go. Um, and it's I'm so saying that a, a writer. Imagine yeah. the team. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's if. <laughs> It's so much more natural for the season to end in late May after a d disappointing Eastern Conference Finals loss as opposed to an <laughs> NBA Finals loss. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I'm used to, right? <laughs> uh, so, okay. So the Summer League roster, um, very interestingly, and the only thing that's really interesting about this is there's no Yamadar, which is, yeah. I think, very interesting because – this is supposed to be his moment, right, to get to the NBA. And they're saying that he's doing it to focus on the Israeli national team for whatever thing is going on now. There's like qualifying for something or other yeah. that's going on around the world. I'm not even sure what it is. But like, 
okay. Now I understand players, international players value that stuff a lot more highly. And, you know, you see some highlights of Luca, Luca's playing basketball and, you know, all of that. But at the same time, Yam has been very eager to get over here to yep. get to become part of the Celtics. Yep. And you would think that this is kind of sort of an opening for a ball handler off the bench that can pass and play some defense and kind of sort of fits what he does. And now he's like, oh, yeah, here's my opportunity to prove that I can come over there and I'm not going to take it. Feels a little odd. It does feel odd. It feels to me a little bit like he might have some intel that he's probably not making this year's team anyway. And so if he's not going to make this year's team, then he might as well, you know, keep his relationship good with his um, with his Serbian team, you know, play for that for the Israeli national team, just kind of do these things that that are going to be really good for him internationally, right? Because who knows if and when this NBA thing might get going for him. Like, you don't want to burn all your bridges for, you know, a 20% chance to make the Celtics roster if, you know, the 80% happens and then, you know, all of a sudden these these good relationships that you've built up, you know, you, I mean, you, you don't want to throw those things away. It, it puts you in a tough spot when you're, um, when you're kind of in that in between. And um, it's, it's, I, look, I don't know that that's the case, you know, may, maybe he thinks that, and maybe, I, I, heck, I don't know, maybe he has a, you know, a great run with the Israeli national team and the Celtics are like, Oh, there's the guy. But like, yeah, it, it, it feels like sort of a tacit acknowledgement that this is not going to be the season of Yam Madar to the Celtics. And um, you know, look, we'll see what happens going forward. I mean, you know, I think, like, like JD Davison is going to have a you know a much uh, a much more direct tryout you know for the team mm -hmm. uh, you know Juan Beggarin is going to have a much more direct tryout for the team like these are spots that could be filled so you know he's t I, I think it's if his ultimate goal is to make it to the NBA and is to play for the Celtics I think he is taking a bit of a risk here but at the same time you have to understand it if if he doesn't feel like you know kind of the cost benefit is going to work out in his favor there. Yeah. By the way, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more, with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. And while we would have bet on Yam coming on over and and giving it his shot, I do agree with you that that I think I think the the word from it had to be it had to be the word from the team like, okay, we're not getting rid of Marcus Smart. We're not getting rid of Derek White. Right. You're going to be the third string guy. If you come over, if you come over, if you come over, you're still competing for backing up those two guys. And yes. you're still competing with Peyton Pritchard. And you're still competing with, we might find a guy, a veteran guy to come over. So you, you're not, you're, you're still not in that top. Two. So you're, you're competing with these other guys. There's a, a chance that you're not going to get that job yep. and you're going to spend the season in the G league and on the bench. Yep. <clears throat> Is that what you want? And I think if I'm Yamadar, Madar, I'd be like, I think uh, you made, I think you made the best point. If you're not going to get that spot, then why piss off the Israeli national team by not going? Why piss off your Serbian team by, by going, just say, just put your PR out there. And then try it again. Yep. And I, look, I, I'll be honest. I haven't seen like I'm not studying a ton of Yamadar film, but I would say that at least statistically, there there would be certain benchmarks statistically that show he's ready to come to the NBA. He played in a tougher league this year, and his his stats were just kind of average. Okay, like he's okay. Like yeah. Yeah, and I mean international stats are hard to are hard to read into, um, obviously. But I but I think the thing the bigger point is he is trying to join a very complicated team. This Celtics team is 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 really good for one thing. They also really do you know like I mean one of the points of interest really was kind of acquiring that secondary ball handler. So they need somebody who they know can contribute. They don't really have room to bring in somebody if they don't know for sure. Hey, this guy's going to play because. You know, like they're trying to win a championship. Like, you know, that's the reason. And, and not for nothing, they drafted J.D. Davison and said all of this stuff about like basically telling him, 
we like you. We think you're pretty good. You're not going to play this year. We do want to help you develop your NBA career. Like that, that's that's why we drafted you is to, to, to kind of put you on the right to help help put you on the right path. I don't think they have room for two of those guys. So, yeah. you know, I, I, like it's just I think when you especially the other thing, obviously, Yam, you know, is a second round pick. So he has he has no guarantees from anybody. You know, there's there's nothing saying if you come over, you're going to get an NBA contract. So, yeah, right. I think it's tough. It's, 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 you know, playing, it's it's hard to make the NBA. I've, I've often said <laughs> it's it's very hard. It's very hard to do so. Um, so no Yamadar. We'll we'll wait and see. It'll be another year, at least another year. Before, and, and more questions about, hey, have you seen Yam? What's he doing? So that's clearly clearly he's not ready. If they if if the team thought he was ready, he'd be here. Um, it's gonna be another again another year of everybody looking to Tomek for answers. That's right. <laughs> so um, who does great work, by the way, with those? Oh yeah. Guys. Absolutely. Uh, quickly, my take on JD Davison is that he's going to he's going to quickly become the summer league darling because he jumps eight feet high, and he's going to like within the first in the first half of the first summer league game, he's going to obliterate somebody. He's just going to take somebody's soul, and he might do it enough where the the hype train just flies out of the station um and then he's obviously he's going to spend his entire season as maybe even a two-way player i don't know if, if they're going to give him the guaranteed contract or not he might just be a two-way guy um i feel like this entire season is just going to be so what's davison doing like he's going to have like a summer league where people are going to be like whoa and they're going to get caught up in the summer league results and i think we're just going to have the whole year of no, he's not ready. No, I know. I know you saw that G League highlight. I know you saw him dunk on somebody from you know Grand Rapids, but it's, it's just not. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, look, I, I think that's I think that's very plausible. I, I don't see any path to him getting minutes this year. And I think Brad Stevens really kind of laid the foundation for that in his um, in his in his remarks. I mean, I thought you know after after he was drafted, I, I thought it was like honestly, I thought it was like you know. Pretty good thoughts from Brad, right? Like, like he he was very clear that he was like, look, and I think there's value in helping a guy develop, right? In 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 just like, and the Celtics, you know, kind of showing that they have a good player development staff, like really putting some time and effort into somebody that does a lot of things. It helps your, you know, it, it helps your reputation as a team, as, as a development staff. It helps um, your reputation among, you know, if JD Davidson, JD Davidson's agent. You, if you build that guy up, you help him out down the line, whether he sticks with your team or not, you know, there's going to be like, you know, kind of good feelings toward your franchise. So I think uh, like for the Celtics, look at him as like, you know, Terry Rozier, right? Like his first year, um, Terry Rozier is like the absolute pinnacle of what this could accomplish, obviously. But like, you know, that would be a great outcome for J.D. Davison. But like um, just if you look at that, right, where he barely played his first year, he was in the G League for the most part. Um, that's, you know, that's probably the best case scenario where it's like, this first season is going. There's going to be none of him. Expect to see him next year in Las Vegas again, and then maybe we can make a real evaluation about who JD Davison is and, and what he could be, either for the Celtics or in in the NBA generally going forward. But it's and look, I think that's going to be fun, right? Like I think it's going to be a fun little subplot to this season where this is a team that expects to compete for a championship and expects to try to you know win as many games as possible. And oh yeah, if you're bored. There's this little sideshow over here, <laughs> super bouncy guy with all the hair. Like this is fun. Like this is great. So um, I, I, I think it, I think it could be just kind of a, a fun subplot to a Celtic season. It's not going to be more than that this year, but be interesting to watch. Very, very interesting to watch. Um, all right. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. Well, there's going to be plenty of summer league talk coming up. I know people are going to be dying for summer league talk, but hey, you know. I know people are going to fall in love with these guys. Uh, the real talk that's going on right now for the Celtics that we are going to dive into is the Kyrie Irving situation in Brooklyn and the ripple effect, which could be KD potentially asking his way out and how Boston might be the number one team with something to offer. Do we want to offer it? We'll come back and talk about that. First... Let's talk about Bet Online, your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information, the latest developments, league reviews, news, including the Stanley Cup playoffs, which we're recording as it's going on right now. They might just be over 
by the time I don't I do not know the result of the Stanley Cup playoffs as I'm speaking. Major League Baseball is still going on, so there's plenty of that going on. You can bet on all of that. Plus, uh, esports, MMA, boxing, golf. It's all there at Bet Online, your continued source for all of your sports wagering. Plus, esports. I don't know how people bet on esports, but that's something that you can do, and you can do it at Bet Online. Your best spot for all of your sports scores, podcast news, this information. Head on over to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online is where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. So Kyrie Irving is, I don't know what, what's going on with him and the Nets and this whole big song and dance. And I think most people, it's, it's starting to trend that Kyrie could be done in Brooklyn. That's, that's not the shocking part. That's not shocking to me at all. Um, so good Stutter. luck. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to the next team that's going to have Kyrie for two years before he wants out. Um, literally, has he ever been with any team for more than two years? Cleveland. How long was he in Cleveland? Three? Uh, well, he, no, he was in Cleveland for his entire rookie contract. Signed a, he signed, he signed a max extension off his rookie contract, right? Because he was traded, he was drafted in 2011, 2012. Was that, how? I thought it was three. Hold on, I'm going to find out right now. Either way. That's and that, yeah. he was drafted in 2011 and obviously requested his trade in uh 2000. Okay. So yeah. Cleveland was the team, you're right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so six years in Cleveland. After that, the, the only other team he's been with, this is his third year in Brooklyn. Uh, the reason I bring it up is because he, you know, he transferred in high school, he like did two years and then two years. It's yeah. like the two year thing is, is, is where he, you know, it's, it's the, it's the Kyrie special. Yeah. Um, well, he left and he left to Duke after one year, which really like it really it gave him the, the right amount of time for you to have like fond memories. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So whatever. Kyrie is I, I'm not going to go down the whole Kyrie road. Yeah. yeah. He, he goes where he goes. Good luck to you. Now, if he goes, then. Well, but that- I do think before before you get to that, I do think there's one interesting thing about that, which is if you're Kyrie, I do wonder how much, you know, just like the, the vaccine thing. Um, is going to push him out the door, right? Because I'm sure he didn't love not playing any more than Nets fans loved not having him play. So I, I'm curious if that, uh, if if you know, if anything, like you know, who knows what happens after this summer? But if if there's you know further restrictions at any point in the future, I, I wonder if uh, that's oh part yeah, of- I mean if if yeah. COVID, I, I mean I honestly am fascinated with how the league is going to handle COVID, yeah, moving forward because they, I think did a whole lot of looking the other way yes. during the finals. I, a lot of people like the commissioner didn't, the commissioner got COVID yep. and, and couldn't hand out the trophy. And like, I can just tell you like from a media perspective, like all of a sudden halfway through, they were like, Hey, you really need to be wearing a mask. Like it was kind of like optional. We just, everybody had just sort of moved on with every, like the rest of the country. And like, all right, yeah, I mean, this is, it is what it is now. And then they were like, yeah, you, we're handing out masks here. Here you go. Everybody gets a mask. It's as many as you want. Go ahead. And I was like, oh, okay. So something was going on and they were just like, just get through the finals, get through the finals, get through the finals. And then now we'll see what happens with the moving forward. I, I don't know. I, I can't even speculate. What, what are the, what are the what are the restrictions going to be? Are, you think New York is going to have another mandate? Like, are they going to get no that? idea? Who the Probably. hell knows? Yeah, <laughs> who the hell knows? But I, I think part of the thing for Kyrie, though, the part of the calculus at least has to be if there's going to be a place that does have a mandate, it's probably a place like New York, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, um, nah, I don't know. Anyway, that was just a side note that I was no, like, right? Yeah, like, but you know what's we'll fair? It's fair. It's fair. Because if he has to do that again, if he says I'm not getting it again, then that's a whole other thing. Like it's a it's an entirely different. But there's a lot of there's so many ifs there, yeah. um, and we just need to deal with the one that if he leaves, there's this whole debate about. And here we are again. Jalen Brown is at the center of a debate. Do Poor you trade Jalen Brown for somebody? He's going to be like, like sitting there on some beach or doing some camp, or whatever, and being like, "Really, we're doing this now." We two games from a championship, and we're talking about trading me now. Like, I would be 
Jalen already doesn't like the media. Like he already has like this thing where he says the media. I don't think he has anything individual, but like the media he doesn't like. Yeah. To have this, to have this coming out now is like and debates going on now and scrolling around Twitter. It's if I was if I was Jalen, I'd be like, you gotta be kidding me. Like you gotta be. Um yeah. So for <laughs> Hopefully he understands that this is just part of the thing. And the reason I'm I'm even bringing it up and talking about it on the podcast is that I don't think that it should happen. So let's start with there, with that. Just do you think that getting, if, if Brooklyn said, yeah, a package centered around Jalen Brown will give you Kevin Durant for that? You think that's something that the Celtics should do? seriously consider and, and even do so here's it is well okay backing up very briefly i don't think he does appreciate this conversation swirling again uh there was a, a, t- a tweet sent out that somebody screen capped I, I don't know what the handle was i apologize but it is legitimate um like jalen very recently liked a tweet that said jalen brown is so underappreciated by celtics fans so not mm. just media but mm. fans and it's like Yikes. Um, so I, I would, I would caution like fans. Um, you should, you should operate under like, you might not want to operate under the same rule that media have to operate under, which is that these guys are seeing and reading every one of your tweets. I know you might not think that, but they are. If your tweet gets more than like 10 to 15 retweets or like 20 likes, they probably have seen it. And if, and, and beyond that, even if they don't, they feel the general vibe that comes sure. via social media. So like whatever you're putting out there, they are seeing and they are feeling it. So keep that in mind. All right. Yeah. That was a quick side note. Okay. Um, as far as, as far as the trade itself, it's very complicated because I do think that if you traded, if you traded Jalen for KD, I do think that you're upping your championship potential for next year. And in a, in a cut and dry, you know, like, like just a, just a one-to-one, like this is, this is what, you know, you know, the, the ultimate goal of an NBA team is to win a championship. If that is all that you care about, then I understand saying, I think you should, you know, then yeah, I, I, I think you go for a championship, you try to win, you know, you, you try to build after that. You can always, you know, you, if once, once you're a championship team, you can always reshuffle some things and keep yourself competitive and put yourself on a good path. All that aside, I don't think I would do it because like yeah. this team is, is good. They've played together for a long time. And I think the, you know, like however you feel about the narrative that was around Boston after they traded Isaiah Thomas, right? However you feel about that narrative, this team is the type of team that could not only win a championship, but could also just kind of redirect your franchise back toward like a sort of sort of a group that is um, that, that cares about it's you know where, where the narrative is they care about their players, they care about you know kind of keeping things together, keeping things like you know um, a lot a lot of homegrown talent, all that stuff. Um, this group could be that group. Um, and I think there's, I don't know. I think there's some kind of intangible value in just having, um, a team that, that, that people like a team that, that likes each other, that has been together, that has experienced all this together. Um, and I don't know, I mean, honestly, maybe I'm being kind of idealistic with that because like I said before, I do think that, you know, the main goal of every NBA team is to win a championship. And I do think that Kevin Durant probably gets you closer right this second, but, there's something kind of intangible about this run that this team was on and how good they are all together and, and, and how they've been built that I think is valuable in some way. Mm-hmm. I, I, I tend to agree. Um, is, is Kevin Durant better than Jalen Brown right now? Of course, of course. Um, Top 10 I, player all time. Right, right. Um, my, my biggest question is, How much better will he be next year and for how much longer? And both guys have had injury kind of issues, but I still, I fear, I fear the injuries with KD so much more now because he's 34. He's still a slight of body and that hasn't, that hasn't really cost him much but he's still a slight guy who is big. And when you're that big and move the way he does, I'm actually amazed he hasn't gotten more hurt, but 
I feel like the breakdown is going to happen and happen quickly with him. And he, so I, I, number one, I'm afraid of that. Um, number two is, you know, Jalen is so young and I, I feel like there, there is the potential. There is the potential for a championship next year, for sure. You increase your odds for a championship next year. And that's hard. It's hard to sit there and say like, well, yeah, you, you could, you could win a championship next year. If you trade for, for Kevin Durant, I, th I think that's, that's obvious. Um, there's another issue about how, who you really give up. Like realistically, who do you give up? Because this is actually the, the, the conversation. The conversation is not just Jalen for Kevin Durant. Cause that doesn't work, but right. in effect, that's, that's kind of what you're trading. Um, you increase your odds. You don't guarantee anything. I guess nothing's guaranteed in life anyway. But I don't know, man. I just I I like maybe it's a maybe it's a, an idealistic thing. Maybe it's a romantic idea of basketball where you're like, you know what? They, these guys came so close. So you know that if you build around these guys and enhance them a little bit, plus some internal improvement. You're sitting there like, well, you got to the finals before. You can do it again, and maybe with the right pieces around them, you can have like a more sustained run. And like, why not see if you can get this to go five, six years? Why not sit there and say, why can't you be the Warriors? Why right. can't you be the Warriors? I mean, I know Steph is – I don't know if, if Tatum is going to be Steph, but like why can't you make a run where – you're in contention for a much longer time than than you would be in the short term Kevin Durant possibility and I don't know man I just I, that that's that's where my fears lie. Let me let's take a break for a second. I'm going to let you respond to that. Hold that thought for a second. Let's talk about Rock Auto first. Uh, there are a tons of makes and models out there. We know that there are so many cars it's impossible for those local chain auto parts stores to carry everything every car needs. You're going to go in there and give somebody behind a counter all of the specs to a car, um, and you're not even going to remember everything. Uh, you're gonna, they're going to tell you, "Hey, we have this. This is the part, the only part that we have." Rather than go to Rock Auto and put those same specs into your phone or your laptop, your computer at home, you uh, have a ton of options. If you want high end, you want maybe a little bit more of a budget part, whatever it is, you kind of have different price points there. And no matter how complicated the piece, you need something for that engine. Nothing that I know about, but I know plenty of people who do know about engines and they've gone to Rock Auto and they've saved a lot of money. I will get like my windshield wipers or motor oil or carpets and stuff like that, which is all there too. Uh, they are a family company that's been doing this for more than 20 years. Uh, they will save you plenty of money on every little thing that you can think of for your car. When you go to Rock Auto, you'll see all the parts available for your car or truck. And when you do buy something, make sure that you write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box. That's how they know we sent you. Write Locked On in their How, how Did You Hear About Us box. It's an amazing selection. Reliably low prices. Prices. All the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. All right, Tom, I just spent a few minutes laying out my fears uh, and you you were like, ah, and then I cut you off. So, yeah. So let's pick it up from you gasping in, in response. Well, yeah, my, my internet is unfrozen now. Wow, I'm out of, all right, this is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think my, the thing is to me, the thing the Celtics have to have to consider, um, and again, I, I, I don't think I would trade Jalen for KD. Just I want, I want to make that clear. I think the thing that Celtics fans and the Celtics themselves more so do have to consider is how long is Jalen going to be happy in in Boston? And mm -hmm. if the answer is a long time, then I don't think you make this deal, right? Like, and I, you know, I don't know. I, I you know, I've talked to Jalen, you know, often like like for you know for a, for a lengthy stretch. I, I don't know where his head is at now, obviously. Right. But if he's going to be if he's going to be happy in Boston for a while, I don't think you make this trade because Jalen is is really good. You know he's 
Um, you know, he gets better, like, you know, every off season he gets better and then he pretends that he didn't work on anything. And everybody's like, Jalen, I can see what you worked on. I know you worked <laughs> on it. Um, but like, you know, he's, he's a really good young player and, uh, you don't, you, you just can't be, you can't be tossing away, uh, you know, really good young players like that. And I don't think the Celtics would, but I do wonder, you know, this the Celtics have, have pretty clearly broadcasted, you know, that this is, you know, whether, whether it be, um, you know, whether it be in leaks to the media or whether it just be purely in the way that they're constructed as a team, that this is Tatum's team. And, and, uh, if you know if, if that's if that's if that's where he if he's going to be happy with that then no problem at all but if he's not then i do wonder when you have to start thinking about like okay like you know we have to put something together where tatum can win a championship and tatum can be happy you know somebody's got to be happy you know what like and, right, and, and right. you're building the team around tatum um you know keeping him happy is 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 the big thing and He's a guy who does put a lot of value on legacy and on achieving benchmarks. And for him, a lot of guys who are kind of at his point, you know, if he started winning championships right about now, that would look awful good, right? You start to rack up a finals MVP. You start to, um, you know, you, you start to do these things that that he feels like he wants to do in sort of his ascent to becoming who he wants to be. So um, I think those are the two things. I think that's kind of something that you have to consider if you're the Celtics. It's just like, you know, does, does you know, you don't want to you don't want to get to a point where Jalen is going to sign somewhere else because he's unhappy. Um, so is is this the time that you have to start thinking about that? I don't know. I if I'm the Celtics, I probably wouldn't do it. But I, I think that's the conversation you have to have within the organization. Yeah, I mean, it is. And look, I, I think there's a a strong possibility that Jalen may decide. I shouldn't say strong possibility. There is a possibility that Jalen may decide that he wants to start fresh somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That he says, you know, everything runs its course, and you know, you want to start something somewhere else. And maybe he does feel un unappreciated. Maybe that that is the case. I don't know. There's there's a ton of maybes here. Um, I'm working under the assumption that the Celtics will get better, and that they have the potential to win a championship next year. One way or the other. Um, I think it's important here to just kind of talk about another reason why we may not do this trade. And that's when when you look at actually executing this, Jalen Brown makes 28 million, 29. Yeah. Kevin Durant makes 44. You need to add $8 million to this deal to make yes. it work. Yep. So let's just be honest here it's not just Jalen and this is part of the calculus okay you can we can argue and debate Jalen for Kevin Durant like we have and that's I still like I I understand that Kevin Durant is who he is I am afraid at 34 that he doesn't have as many years left and I'm afraid that you're trading the best years of Jalen Brown for the end of Kevin Durant and like he's a catastrophic injury away from going oh my god what did we do like that's that's what I'm I'm for, I'm afraid of. I would rather kind of go with the you know the the setup the team that we know works and has so much room for improvement. This team was two wins from a championship and they have so much room to get better and I believe in that potential. On top of that, when you add 8 million dollars at least to this deal to make it work, well what do you have? They sit there the Nets and say, "Hey, we've got Kevin Durant Okay, and they say the Celtics say, "Wait, we got Jalen Brown. We got the best. We got the best young player out there that we'd be willing to trade." And then they, then you say, "Okay, well, you have to take Daniel Tice." And they might be like, mm, "We don't want Daniel Tice." So, if you want Kevin Durant, like they have the power. Yeah. Right. You you can say, "Hey, we're giving up Jalen Brown." You'd be like, okay, but you're getting Kevin Durant. So, right. Pony up, buddies. We want Robert Williams. And. And importantly, the important thing to remember, they like they're not under any pressure to keep things quiet either. Like, right in this scenario, Kevin Durant already wants out, and so, you know, and and uh, you don't want to let so, right. out. Yeah, yeah. So Sean Marks starts starts dropping the yes, right, <laughs> and starts pissing everybody off, and starts messing with the Celtics chemistry. Yep. So it's going to take Jalen and something that costs 
at least somebody that's at least $8 million. And I'm sorry, the combination of Grant Williams and somebody else isn't going to be it, right? That's just not going to do it. They are going to sit there and say, we want Rob. We want Rob. It's going to be Jalen and Robert Williams. And is that is that going to be the price that you're willing to pay? And at that point, I'm out. I am, like, you know, like for me. The, do you the, think they would ask for Rob? Or do you think that I, I kind of have a hard time seeing them ask for Rob? Why not? Why I mean, they could ask. I don't think that would be a sticking point for them. Because like you said, I do think the Celtics would be able to say, like, okay, dude, you're not getting anything better than Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I do think that the Celtics could kind of be a stick in the mud there. Sure. I mean, I guess it depends on who, which other teams are out there yeah, right. offering what, right. you know, and, and that right. would be that would be the question. Um, but you it it has to be Jalen plus something. And I don't yeah. think Jalen and Daniel Tice and whatever in all of the picks that the Celtics have, I don't think so. Unless Brooklyn's betting that, hey, you know what? Yeah, sure. We'll take all your picks, but we want all of your picks. <laughs> um, all of the pick swaps, everything. And in their betting on, we know KD only has a year or two left. Right. So we're going to do to the Celtics what the Celtics did to them. <laughs> basically. And then you're going to say, Jason Tatum has an opt out in a couple of years. If KD is done and the team's in effectiveness is done. And then Tatum goes, well, I mean, it was fun. I'm not, I'm not going to stick around for a uh, rebuild. I'm right. not going to do that. So pfft, I'm out, which is another reason to keep Jalen Brown. Because if you can keep Jalen Brown, and again, it always depends on if either of these guys are happy, you can offer a contract and then they have to sign it. But I'm assuming that he's going to be on board with the continuous winning or potential to win a championship, that he likes Ime, he likes the teammates. And if fans in the media, he gets pissed off every once in a while, so be it. He likes where he lives. He likes who is, he works with. He likes who he works for. That's the important thing. Um, I think that the potential to keep Tatum around for that next contract and keeping Jalen Brown around and, and just continuously keeping those two guys at the core, you guys are our top two. You are it. Pay them like they are the top two and, and keep rolling with it and just keep yeah. tinkering around the edges. That is the best way to me moving forward. With a 24 and a 25-year-old, you now have seven, eight years of these guys giving you their absolute best basketball. And this is so critical to this entire discussion. They just got to the finals. Tatum is a first-team All-NBA guy. Jalen Brown has made an All-Star team. They are 24 and 25. They have not started playing their best basketball yet. Yeah, They have not. That is the craziest part. Their best basketball is coming next season, the season after, and a few seasons beyond that. I don't want to mess that up. So Kevin Durant, love it. Great. You're awesome. You're a freaking God. And you may swing a championship possibility next year, maybe even the year after. But I'm going even longer term. I think that's me being greedy. I think the Celtics, whatever percentage odds Durant op ups, the, it, it's not going to carry long term. There's a cliff, and you risk after a couple of years falling off that cliff. I think you can win two championships anyway with this team, maybe more. So if you're sitting there saying you can win a couple of championships with Durant, I'm sitting there saying you can win a couple of championships with Jalen Brown and whoever you want to give up. I, I believe that much in this team. And then on top of that, I think you can even win more. You can make more finals. I think the run with these guys long-term is just better. I, and I think the one thing that I think people are, are kind of forgetting in the wake of that finals is next year you will also see Rob Williams. And, uh, like, you'll see, like, a healthy Rob Williams. And, or, you know, at least hopefully, yep. right? Like, you know, <laughs> like, knock on some wood here. But – I, sure. I, I do think that's 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 a crucial part of this too because again the Celtics the starting lineup last year's season was the best 
by a lot. <laughs> like, and you know, you look at any of the numbers with Jalen and Rob, Tatum and Rob, Jalen Tatum and Rob, like any of those numbers, that trio, I think, I think we're underrating Rob a little bit in all of this, but that trio, I, I think it's I think it's getting closer to a big three. And sure. why would you mess that up? Right. Like if you got because Rob also 24. So you you could have a you know 24, 24, 25 big three, or you could have Kevin Durant. And I I again we just made the case for Kevin Durant. I see the case for Kevin Durant. I'm with you though. I think that trio of Tatum, Jalen, and Rob could be really special for a long time if everybody can stay healthy. And I am if I'm the Celtics, I'm willing to bet on that. I'm willing to bet on Tatum. I'm very willing to bet on Jalen Brown, and I'm willing to bet on Rob Williams. Like that's like all the result, the results are all there. Like they just went to the finals and Rob was on one leg the entire time. Healthy Rob Williams makes a huge difference in that warrior series. Yeah. Just, I think you have to run it back. Like, like, and, and you know what? The other thing is if it doesn't work out, you can still build something really good with, if this team, you know, kind of implodes a little bit, or if somebody asks for a trade, fine, then you can still build something good. Um, maybe it's not Kevin Durant. Maybe you end up with, you know, like a Shea Gilgis Alexander, you know, some other really good player. There's other ones out there too. I know Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant, but like you can, you're not going to be screwed if you don't make this Kevin Durant deal, but you could be screwed by this Kevin Durant deal. So like, yeah, you see what I'm saying? I see exactly what you're saying. I'll make, I'll make this analogy because I love making analogies. (laughs) You're a big analogy guy. I'm a big analogy guy. It's like, <laughs> like, uh, like in, in community, you're like an analogy is like a, a thing wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. It. that's it. Um, I look at it as somebody's giving you with the Kevin Durant thing. They're like, here are vegetables. I'm sitting here saying like, yeah, but I've got a garden out back. And like this Celtics team is, is the garden and it's growing and I'll, yeah, you can give me some vegetables now and then they'll be gone. Yeah. I've got a garden. I feel like I can grow a whole And then I have to go buy more vegetables. Right. Right. I've got a garden out back that I think is going to grow me more vegetables than you're giving me right now. So I'm going to stick with this. It's going to take a little bit more time maybe, but I think it's going to bear more than what you're giving me. That's how mm-hmm. I look at the Kevin Durant trade. I but, agree. Yeah, it's, you're going to get something but I think I can just wait and just get a lot more with the combination of these guys. So I'm, it it may never ever get to that point, but I think, I think there is a real possibility that Kyrie is done Yeah, and Durant might be like, yeah, I'm out too. And, and then this debate will actually come to fruition at some point soon. Yeah. And yeah. And then the only other thing that I think Celtics fans need to be like a little bit concerned about is there's absolutely no guarantee that you're going to like the team that like Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant goes to. Like there's some teams out there that could do some damage if they end up with, uh, with Kevin sure. Durant or Kyrie Irving. Sure. Sure. I mean, I'm very, I'm very curious to see. Me too. That, that, that's the other thing. Like who, who can get these guys? I mean, Lakers is going to go, he's going to go to the Lakers. Is one of them going to go to the Lakers? I mean, I don't care. I honestly, I don't care where Kyrie goes. I don't. Right. It's, it's mostly Durant. I don't care. <laughs> like Kyrie can go to the pick a team, whatever. I just don't think he's going to help that. Team. I think he's going to blow it up. You know, whatever. Um, KD, yeah, I get it. I would fear, and if he if he goes to, I don't know, Miami. Miami, Miami, Miami gives that package. Miami's the big one. <laughs> you know, Miami gives that package. And you're like, ah, crap, and that's. <laughs> And that's the, really is the tough part, right? Because yep. that makes that makes this discussion even worse. Because now I'm sitting here saying like, don't blah 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 garden analogy, and then he goes to Miami, and you're like, oh. <laughs> and then and then if Miami wins a championship, you get a whole lot of see you could have, but they did it. And if he goes to one of the rivals and it and you win and and they win, you're like, oh. That's going to make for a very, very painful summer. And like, you're going to have to sit here. Like, I'm going to have to sit here and listen to all the comments, read all the comments until like the Celtics actually do get going. And hopefully they do get going and, and it comes to fruition. But yeah, if there's a, 
the like Miami, Miami would be the other team with, I guess, Hero and I don't I, Bam. Would they give up Bam? I don't think they give up Bam. I don't think they give up Bam. They're a tough but, one. I, I I do wonder if if they'd be the team that would just be like, here's literally all our future draft capital yeah. forever. Um, right. Yeah. This is this is the other thing. The other the other element to this, and and I admit I do fall into this. I like. I'm not a big narrative guy, but I do like the the Celtics drafted these guys. Yeah, it's a good narrative. <laughs> it's a great one, right? It is. I, I like it's really that. good. Yeah. I think I feel like we both just tried to talk around that for for uh, several minutes there, but we we're no, both just like, I mean, on, man, we're writers. It's a good story. It is a good story, and you know what? Like, I want you. Look, I asked I asked Jalen a bunch of questions all season long. I don't know how Jalen Brown feels about me personally, and that's not my job to like. I'm right. not supposed to care, um, but the fact is that I actually I like Jalen Brown a lot. Like yeah. I, I think sure there are a lot of things he can do better, but I, I, I talk about Jalen. I, I kind of approach him the same way coaches used to. Like when I was when I was playing, and coach used to get on my ass a lot, and you know I had to be taken aside after like really like I really got it good for a stretch, and like one of the assistant coaches was like, you know, he's he's saying that because he thinks you have a lot more to give. He's not just saying it because he thinks he's just busting your chops. You know, you like frame it that way, and like whenever, whenever I question what Jalen Brown is doing out there, and get mad at Jalen Brown for like, hey, what are you doing with these turnovers and blah blah blah? It's because I know he can be such a good player. Like I think he can be a perennial like all. Like I think he can have regular All Star appearances and can can make All NBA teams. I think he has that ability in him, and I I just think on a personal level. I think he's a thoughtful guy. I think his heart is in the exact right place. I think he's trying to actually make meaningful change in his community, wherever it is, Atlanta, Boston, wherever he is. Like, this is a guy that Boston should be proud to have on their team as an athlete. Yes. Yes. So, I and, and I, frankly, this entire team is like that. I think this is a team that's extraordinarily likable, but they have unlikable tendencies on the court, which is which is the problem. But I think Jalen is a obviously one of the best basketball players in the world. I think he yep. could be a lot better. I think he's gonna be better. And but I think he's just an overall like just well rounded, uh, impressive individual. And I kind of would like to see that type of person and player win a championship in this city. I think that, that I, why wouldn't it, I, I, I want that? Why wouldn't fans want that? So I think that's part of it too. I, I don't think the, the mercenary road, which, Hey, look, you do what you got to do. Signing a free agent trading for players. It's all part of it. But I, I like the idea of Tatum and Brown being the guys um, for, the narrative purpose as well. I think that's that's just as important. It is. And I think it, it kind of gets back to why we all kind of like why a lot of us started watching sports in the first place. Right. It was like you, um, you know, it's not just this like soulless pursuit of championships because, of course, you want to see your team win a championship. But that's not all it's about, you know, like because every I mean, you know, it's been said before, but every single year there's 29 teams that don't win a championship. So if that's the only thing you got out of the year, then. Why is anybody watching sports? Why do you like it? it it's right. not a, then the value add is like, why should anybody watch? But that's not why we watch. You know, it's like, and I think, you know, something, if the reason that you're watching sports is because somebody like Jalen Brown is, you know, an advocate, um, you know, or, you know, or maybe, maybe you just like him. Maybe you just like watching him play. Maybe you just, that's perfectly reasonable too. Um, you know, I think like, and and like you said, the Celtics have a lot of those kind of guys. And I, I think that is where I think you and I both get kind of tripped up on the narrative where it's like, you know, there, there's there's dudes on this team who like it's legitimately like, you know, there's a lot of guys in the NBA where it's like, I don't think you should cheer for that guy. And, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, the Celtics team has a lot of guys where it's like, nah, yeah, that that's, I like him. Uh, you he's know, I don't I don't I don't know. Boots. I don't know him for sure. But everything I know about him, two thumbs up. So and Jalen's one of those guys. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, you got Tatum. Tatum is much more reserved, but like, look, Tatum. You see him. You see him with his son. You're mm -hmm. like, and that's that's just a good dad. He's a good dude. 
Um, like Jalen you Tatum, and you're like, wow, his only character flaw is that he lets his uh, he lets his son stay up until like 11:45. Right, right. His son, <laughs> his, son his son has a very late bedtime. Um, so be it. Um, <laughs> but like, just on a like Robert Williams, Al Horford, um, all of these guys, Derek White, Marcus Smart, like Marcus, Smart especially like Marcus, especially. Like, not to divert this whole podcast that like th this is this is where I, I really like lose it when it comes to people who who really crap all over smart it's like man this guy has overcome so much and all he cares about is winning he does all of this all of these shenanigans that he pulls is because he wants to win so badly um like he's he's just i don't know and he's like really one of the nicest people like is just so willing to talk to you when you have a private moment with Marcus, he's just so just appreciative of, I think you can feel that he just is like, he likes this moment. He, I don't know, man, he, he's, he's such a, he's like a genuinely good dude. Um, all of these guys are, I think. Um, so yeah, so that's part of, that's part of it. That's part of it. Like, you know what? You know, as a journalist, I don't root for results. You know, I have to separate myself. I know that I grew up a Celtics fan and, you know, there, but there's, you can't help as a human being. Like I keep saying this, I've said this a bunch on podcasts. If I, if I moved to Indiana and covered the Pacers and got to know those guys, I'd root for the Pacers to, you know, like I'd sit there and say, yeah, these are good guys too. Like if they're, if this was the same group type of people like, you know, these are also good guys and these are hardworking guys and there's the city and blah, 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 blah. And I'd say, you know what? I, I'd like to see these guys succeed as well. But, you know, being in Boston, whatever, I think, I think just on a personal level with these guys, I think because you're always so close and there's a line between the media and the players, but also like, I think everybody sort of understands like, you know, we're here to do our jobs. You're doing your jobs. We're kind of doing our thing, but we're also kind of part of the same ecosystem. Like yeah. I'm feeding at this level on the water and you guys are way up here, but like we're on the same water, you know, like we're right. just all part of the same thing. So I hope those guys kind of appreciate that. I appreciate these guys for, for all of that, all of that they are. So that, that definitely is part of why I, I tend to even skew against any sort of trade talk like let's keep these guys i want to see these guys do it mm -hmm. so i mean i know and like tomorrow i'm going to answer mailbag questions uh is about trades and signing guys and it's like it's part of the business but you know at the same time like you know you want to kind of keep these core guys anyway yep we'll wrap it up right there nothing like yeah, it's funny we start out this podcast going huh i don't even know if i have takes anymore <laughs> and now we're now I'm i still got them I still got 20 it. Minutes, <laughs> 20 minutes past the recommended length by, as dictated by the network. So uh, when when I get the email tomorrow, hey, John, that was a really good show. I like the show. Uh, can you keep it closer to 30, 35 minutes next time? I'm like, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, but whatever. All right, Tom, thank you very much. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. Get you back on soon. Now that we get Tom back. Um, get more from Tom uh, this week. Follow him at Tom underscore NBA. Follow me at John underscore Corrales. Obviously, uh, want you to subscribe to the show. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. Plenty more coming up this week. Uh, I can't, you know, I said last week, I'm going to do mailbag Monday, but then this thing comes up. So I'll do mailbag Tuesday and I, maybe I'll do mailbag Wednesday. Hell, maybe I'll do mailbag the rest of the week just to make up for all of you, for all of it. Um, so yes, I will answer all of your questions. I'll have Tom back. We'll both answer your questions. We'll make sure we get to everything. So subscribe. We'll get to all of that the rest of the week. Um, if you watch the show on YouTube, please subscribe there. If you are a subscriber, please share the podcast. Tell your friends, tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.